So the challenge I'm presenting you with is this. How can we get all of these BBs to stick to the sidewalls? I'll talk a little bit about how you can make this thing at the end, but first let's discuss what makes this so difficult. No matter how hard I spin, they just settle into the corners and they don't actually climb up the walls. So what's going on here? Well, first let's start at the beginning. Loosely packed matter will move towards the sides of its container whenever it's rotated. This effect is usually called centrifugal force. Calling an outward motion a force is a bit misleading, but doing so is useful to express the idea. In the case of a liquid, we can even produce a three-dimensional parabola by doing this. This shape that's formed by spinning water is called a paraboloid. Now try to imagine how fast it would have to be going before all of the water would be on the sidewalls. For this reason, we will need to apply a little bit of technique to our sphere stacking problem. So here's our solution. We just allow gravity to give us that extra edge we need. And then we slowly settle it back down. Just as a general rule, the more slowly you grow a crystal, the more perfect you can get it. So the secret to making a perfect lattice is to move very slowly, allow them to distribute themselves nice and evenly, and slowly set it back upright. I will admit to having a preference for symmetry, so there actually is the exact number that you need inside here to make an even number of layers. Now, despite me trying perhaps a couple hundred times, I haven't done it yet. I did it, the closest I came was having only one BB out of place. But it's very simple to adjust this to get the appropriate number of BBs inside of it. So let's take it apart and I'll show you. I've made two different barrel sizes. This one is from two inch inside diameter PVC and this one is from three inch. Ideally, in a perfect world, 
I could use acrylic tube here because then you'd be able to see the BBs from the outside and that would be really cool. But alas, here in the real world, it's much easier to get your hands on PVC. It's worth noting that the smaller barrel is much easier to spin. Um, for most people somewhere this would be too easy and this would be too difficult, so somewhere in between might be ideal. But after some practice you'll develop some good form and the 3 inch, this one, is totally doable. Okay, let's talk about how it's made. I'm not going to actually film any of the build for this because it would be redundant. I've shown all these techniques before somewhere along the way in my YouTube career. These copper rivets fasten this piece of acrylic glass and the drill bit that you will need to make those is 5 sixty-fourths. For metric people, that's 5 divided by 64. Grab a calculator. The main axle is 1 quarter inch cold rolled steel. This is acrylic glass. And polishing it is a bit of an art. You'll have to sand it down to a really high grit sandpaper. I think I stopped at about a thousand and then I used some buffing compound and a buffing wheel. The stopper is just a piece of quarter inch inside diameter vinyl tubing friction fit. Under the hood we have a nylon washer. Uh, actually I'm not, so, I'm not sure that is a nylon washer. It came from an old microwave turntable but it's an extremely low friction material and nylon would work perfectly as a replacement. This is easy to forget, but very important. When you're changing the drums, turn it sideways. If you don't, BBs end up all over the floor. The base is simple enough. It's just a sandwich that consists of three pieces of three-quarter inch plywood. You can spin them about the axle from the drill and press them against a sander. That's how I did it, and it was fast and easy. I think if I were to do it again, I would probably make this curve a bit more organic. The paint job is just a maybe two light coats of white flat spray paint and it gives it a nice matte finish that jives nicely with the PVC. There are perhaps two tricky parts to making this project and I want to touch on both of them. For one, we want to file these rivets down nice and flush so that they don't snag anything. How do we do that without scratching the acrylic glass? Masking tape. If the acrylic glass has been covered with masking tape, you can sand these down on a flat surface all the way until you start to scratch the tape. Then you can just give them a nice tap or two with a nail set and they should be so flush that it doesn't bother anything. The other tricky part is making the two pieces of acrylic glass. We want them to be well, not eccentric. We want them to be perfect, perfectly round. So pretend that this piece of rubber is our two pieces of plexiglass. Do them both at the same time and make a contraption like this out of some all thread and nuts. And now this can be easily chucked into a drill and spun. And you can just press sandpaper against the edges and you'll get two parts that are identical and very well polished. Close! Only one off that time. That's not bad. Well, it's a fun little novelty that can be presented as a bit of a puzzle if you'd like. So I think it's worth making. I hope you enjoyed this one and if you're interested 
I'll post some more paraboloid spins over on my other channel, so join me there. And I just made a lid for this clear box, and hopefully that will help reduce stray air currents, and that should get us a cleaner shape for our paraboloid. I'm also going to take it outside, so that way I can crank up the speed without risk of trashing my shop. Okay, see you soon.